of the wonderful power of the divine love. I bless thee, O Heavenly Father, Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, for that thou hast vouchsafed to think of me, poor that I am. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, I give thanks unto thee, who refreshest me sometimes with thine own comfort, when I am unworthy of any comfort. I bless and glorify thee continually with thine only begotten Son and the Holy Ghost, the Paraclete, for ever and ever. O Lord God, holy lover of my soul, when thou shalt come into my heart, all my inward parts shall rejoice. Thou art my glory and the joy of my heart. Thou art my hope and my refuge in the day of my trouble. 2. But because I am still weak in love and imperfect in virtue, I need to be strengthened and comforted by thee. Therefore visit thou me often and instruct me with thy holy ways of discipline. Deliver me from evil passions and cleanse my heart from all inordinate affections, that, being healed and altogether cleansed within, I may be made ready to love, strong to suffer, steadfast to endure. 3. Love is a great thing, a good above all others, which alone maketh every heavy burden light, and equalizeth every inequality. For it beareth the burden, and maketh it no burden. It maketh every bitter thing to be sweet and of good taste. The surpassing love of Jesus impelleth to great works, and exciteth to the continual desiring of greater perfection. Love willeth to be raised up, and not to be held down by any mean thing. Love willeth to be free and aloof from all worldly affection, lest its inward power of vision be hindered, lest it be entangled by any worldly prosperity or overcome by adversity. Nothing is sweeter than love, nothing stronger, nothing loftier, nothing broader, nothing pleasanter, nothing fuller or better in heaven nor on earth. For love was born of God and cannot rest save in God above all created things. For he who loveth, flieth, runneth, and is glad, he is free and not hindered. He giveth all things for all things and hath all things in all things, because he resteth in one who is high above all, from whom every good floweth and proceedeth. He looketh not for gifts, but turneth himself to the giver above all good things. Love oftentimes knoweth no measure, but breaketh out above all measure. Love feeleth no burden, reckoneth not labors, striveth after more than it is able to do, pleadeth not impossibility, because it judgeth all things which are lawful for it to be possible. It is strong, therefore, for all things, and it fulfilleth many things, and is successful where he who loveth not faileth and lieth down. 5. Love is watchful, and whilst sleeping still keepeth watch. Though fatigued, it is not weary. Though pressed, it is not forced. Though alarmed, it is not terrified. But like the living flame and the burning torch, it breaketh forth on high and securely triumpheth. If a man loveth, he knoweth what this voice crieth. For the ardent affection of the soul is a great clamor in the ears of God, and it saith, My God, my beloved, thou art all mine, and I am all thine. 6. Enlarge thou me in love, that I may learn to taste with the innermost mouth of my heart how sweet it is to love, to be dissolved and to swim in love. 
let me be holden by love, mounting above myself through exceeding fervor and admiration. Let me sing the song of love. Let me follow thee, my beloved on high. Let my soul exhaust itself in thy praise, exulting with love. Let me love thee more than myself, not loving myself except for thy sake, and all men in thee who truly love thee, as the law of love commandeth, which shineth forth from thee. 7. Love is swift, sincere, pious, pleasant, gentle, strong, patient, faithful, prudent, long-suffering, manly, and never seeking her own. For wheresoever a man seeketh his own, there he falleth from love. Love is circumspect, humble, and upright, not weak, not fickle, nor intent on vain things, sober, chaste, steadfast, quiet, and guarded in all the senses. Love is subject and obedient to all that are in authority, vile and lowly in its own sight, devout and grateful towards God, faithful and always trusting in him, even when God hideth his face, for without sorrow we cannot live in love. 8. He who is not ready to suffer all things and to conform to the will of the Beloved is not worthy to be called a lover of God. It behoveth him who loveth to embrace willingly all hard and bitter things for the Beloved's sake, and not to be drawn away from him because of any contrary accidents.